Hey guys, Kuyo here. This, this is going to be a little bit different than the usual video that's hyper edited. But I wanted to, and I've been recently playing Deathloop, uh, the recently released arcane game. Now, the reason why you don't see something like a heavily edited review video is because I'm actually only like, I would say three fourths through the game. And I figured, hey, I play these games for a crazy amount of time. And I know for a fact that I'm not going to be done with this game for at least another week because I'm 26 hours in and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be another 26 hours in by the time I'm done with the review. So in the meantime, uh, I figured I would give my initial thoughts, my opinions on the game so far. I haven't actually formulated anything. I don't really have any concrete ideas, but I do have some things I'd like to note. First off, I would like to mention how I installed it, how all that stuff went for me. So when I initially started the game, and you might be seeing this in the background while I'm talking about it, is it was very, very simple. Uh, I actually pre-ordered the game uh, about a day before it actually launched so that I'd be able to preload it and get as early of a start as I could because I knew I was going to take forever to play the game. Uh, that went pretty smoothly. I launched the game. Uh, I did start noticing some hitching when I installed it. First off, tons of screen tearing when I first opened up the game. Uh, there was also a fair bit of glitchiness when I uh, tried to record my screen, at least initially starting it, where my mouse is like bugging out. But besides that, nothing really big. Uh, another another big thing I noticed was uh, when I when I launched the game, after a bit of. Uh, tweaking for the settings, which I'll get to in just a second, the intro to the game was absolutely amazing. It not only hooked me in, it immediately got me hooked on what exactly the premise was, the characters. Oh, I love the characters, by the way. They're amazing. Colt was amazing. Juliana, just their interactions. I love them. Uh, the opening level, you'll start feeling like the game doesn't have a very big scope, but then every time you start feeling a little bored with it, it'll get bigger. And so far, that's what I've been experiencing. Every time I start getting a little bored, they'll introduce something new to the kind of game flow that'll like immediately make the game significantly more fun. At this point in the game, what I'm basically unlocking is weapons, exploring new aspects of levels, because uh, I should mention there's only four levels, but those four levels are variant on the time of day. So there's four levels and there's four different times a day for those four levels, I think. Because there's a uh, morning... Uh, noon, afternoon, and nighttime. Yeah. And every level varies based off the time of day. There are some exceptions to that. Like some levels are inaccessible based off the actions you have. And I haven't actually fully gotten down to every possible uh, variation that I can get yet. But I will be trying to get to that at some point uh, before the review I make. Uh, but it's been a, a pretty fun game so far, I think. But I did mention a little earlier that there were some performance issues. This game is terribly, terribly optimized. I don't know what it is, or even if it is optimization, but I had to... I'm not even running this on a very powerful PC anymore. I did in the past. But I think I did mention this in the past where I actually lost my uh, my laptop, which was running a 1060, which when I got it was pretty powerful. Uh, and I had to actually downgrade to lower amounts of VRAM so I'm running off a uh, 1650 Super, so that only has 4 gigabytes of VRAM. So that's actually below the game's requirements, but I figured that because the performance is about on par with the 1060 I used to have, I wouldn't really experience any problems. Uh, I was a little mistaken in that. Uh, I basically had to crank everything down to low. Uh, luckily, the game does have adaptive resolution scaling. They actually use the new AMD FSR, which renders at a lower resolution, and then uses uh, sharpening and a bunch of different techniques to blow it up to whatever your screen resolution is. And that really helped. Uh, there is still hitching. I can't quite lock 60. Um, I'm hovering somewhere between 40, 60 something. I'll get into this in way more detail in the actual review. But I did do a lot of tweaking and I got something that I felt was acceptable. Uh, besides that, the game's art style music so far has been amazing. There are some few glitches with the music where it just stops playing, but... I love it so so far. It's really fun. It really like matches the aesthetic they're going for. By the way, the game does take place in 1960. Or in the 60s. I think it's 67. There's some conflicting reports, but I remember one of the characters saying 67. 
Another really big thing I noticed was that the game actually reuses a bunch of assets from Prey and Dishonored. Or I wouldn't say necessarily a bunch, but a few that I noticed, just because I've played Prey for about 100 hours now, and I've played Dishonored and Dishonored 2 for even more than that. And first and most notable one is the turrets. So Deathloop does have turrets, but the thing is those turrets... <laughs> They're pretty much identical to the ones from Prey, like sounds included. They just don't have the Typhon organism detected voice or whatever it was. Uh, but th that's very noticeable. Another thing was the shotgun animation. So if you have a very large gun, you basically do the exact same sprint that Morgan does in uh, Prey, where if you have a gun, you like do the stupid little jog. Uh, it's it's wild. I actually was surprised that they really reused something that simple because you think a running animation would be very easy to make. Because it's just the gun bobbing up and down. So maybe they did remake it, but it, it looks so similar to me that I couldn't even tell. Another reused thing I noticed was the uh, like boarding off textures from Dishonored 2. Or the actual asset itself where like a door is blocked off and they have like a metal door thing in front of it. it looks identical to it. I, like I said, I don't really know if it's the same thing, but it looks the same to me. The game has also had a few bugs. It's crashed on me a few times, but... Uh, don't really know what's causing them. Every time it says, like, some random errors, I'll probably look at it more before the review. But so far, the the game has been a very, very fun experience, aside from the occasional issue, bug, etc. Uh, online play has been interesting, um, because the game does have an online aspect. And I remember for the longest time, so many people thought, oh, it's going to be a purely online experience. And no, no, it's not. I know there's been a fair bit of criticism for the game based off uh, things like Denuvo and the PS5 exclusivity, but I don't really think those are things that you can really like criticize the game over because every game has Denuvo until like two or three months in and then they remove it. And exclusivity is just something that's going to exist. And good thing is it's still on PC. So for me, it's a good thing. Maybe not for Xbox players. But yeah, uh, that's the game. That's what I've been experiencing so far without any spoilers. I legitimately have enjoyed every second of it. I don't quite think it's nearly as good as I'd want it to be. But a lot of the concepts it introduces, a lot of what it does is amazing. I'm surprised they even did it to the extent they did. Uh, and I can't wait to uh, actually finish the game. Because at this point, I feel like I'm going to... This game's kind of bad for me because... I'm a completionist, so I, I don't finish the game until I finish every single side activity. And every single side activity means I need to keep, like, looping every single day over and over to make sure I get a specific thing. And I feel like I'm going to be playing it forever. But hopefully I'll have it done in time for the review next week. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching. That has been my first impressions. I don't really know if they're first anymore because I'm a fairly large amount into the game. But I really don't know if I'll have it, like, done within the same amount of time I've been playing it. So another 26 hours, like I mentioned. Make sure you look out for the review and especially the lore videos that will come after that because this game is a treasure trove and I'll have to do a lot of digging for it. Anyways, this is Kuyo signing off. See ya.